Today is the feast of St. Augustine, one of the greatest saints in the history of the church, doctor of the church whose theology has been really primal in forming our understanding of so many theological truths and concepts. He lived in the fourth century and is famous for his life of um, spiritual and moral wandering before Christ finally got a hold of him and captured his heart. So he followed different philosophies. He had a concubine, he had a child with her, was always looking for truth. So he had a restless heart, an inquiring mind, a soul filled with all sorts of desires. And it was when he heard the preaching of St. Ambrose in the Cathedral of Milan that grace filled his heart and he realized that what he was hearing was true, beautiful, and good. And that sparked his conversion to Catholicism and certainly aided by the wonderful and tearful prayers of his mother, St. Monica, whose our memory we celebrated yesterday on August 27th. St. Augustine says that for a pure heart to be created in us, uh, the, the unclean heart or the, the failed heart must be crushed. And I've always been struck by that line because those words remind us that in order for the life of God to find root within us, in order for us to become the person that God has called us to be, uh, the false self must be crucified. The false self that wants to be at the center, the false self of my ego that has so many desires and plans and opinions and always wants to control and, and make all these judgments, that noisy voice inside of my head that needs to be stilled. You know, the, the false self of sin and ego and self-centeredness must be crucified so that what arises within you and I is the saint that God has called us to be. Slowly, day by day, moment by moment, with a lot of twists and turns, some falling back, I'm picking ourselves up, rising again, sinning, going to confession, you know, the, the whole process of, of a human life, making its pilgrim way to the Father's house. How that drama turns out, how that conversion happens within us, or what, what the end of the story is for each one of us, is the ultimate meaning of each one of our lives. So Augustine reminds us that one individual who has been captured by Christ and completely gives herself or himself to the Lord becomes capable of so much good because in essence, uh, the false self has been cleared away. Our own needs, our own plans have been permanently put on hold and tabled so that God can have free reign with us. That is, Teresa of Avila says, Christ wants to reign on the throne of your heart. For Jesus to reign on my throne of my heart, I need to declutter that throne. I need to take everything else off of it that I want to be there. And my unredeemed self wants to sit on that throne wants to be the center, wants to be in charge. So the whole life of conversion is me getting out of the way, me getting off that throne of my heart so that Jesus can reign there, that Jesus has control, that, that Jesus' love and grace is enough for us. It's one of the reasons a priest wears vestments at Mass, because it's Christ who celebrates the Mass. It's Christ who preaches. It's Christ who um, does all the actions of the liturgy through the instrumentality of the office of the priest. So when a priest puts on vestments, essentially it's saying, it's no longer Don Hying celebrating here, it's, it's Christ through the instrumentality of that office. Apply that to the Christian life in general, that in many ways we are called to disappear, not in a sense of annihilation or subjugation or um, oppression, but rather that that false self disappears so that more and more when people encounter you and I, they encounter Christ. That when we speak, they hear an echo of Christ's voice. When they see our loving actions, that they feel um, some of the gentleness and tenderness of Christ's heart. That there's more and more room for Jesus in me, which means there's less and less room for myself. Tomorrow we celebrate the beheading of John the Baptist. And of course he famously says, he, Jesus, must increase, I must decrease. 
In St. Augustine, then, we see a heart that was captured by Christ. And Augustine famously says, Our hearts are restless until they rest in you, O Lord. Which means there's a homing device in us that will only be satisfied when it rests in God. There's no other person, relationship, achievement, possession, experience that can satisfy us. Only Christ, only God, only his love for us. We pray to St. Augustine today that our wandering minds, our restless spirits, that that restlessness within us, which is a good thing, will finally lead us fully into the Father's house at the end of our pilgrimage.